It used to be that when you drove into Avoca Beach, there were no signs to tell you of the little treasure that was tucked away at the end of it. You had to be coming here for years. You had to be in the know. Just a hundred meters from the sea, this little treasure could be a cafe in its garden setting. But if you came on it the other way, you'd quickly see that it was a little movie theater. Yes, a single screen that's been going a very long time now. This screening here looks like it could be from the early days, but it's actually Melbourne Cup Day 2000. They'd always find something appropriate for the ladies in the hats. We love it. 2000 was about the time that I discovered this theatre's little secret. It's a place of entertainment for sure, but it's also itself entertaining. <laughs> bring a bottle, bring a bottle. I also discovered that uh, patrons of this theatre are far from frivolous, that they have a very strong sense of the importance of the place. The end of the film before it's... Oh, the, the Evoca Theatre, it's, it's like the, the heart and soul of Evoca Beach. It's, it's, it's well known all throughout the state. People know about Evoca Beach and the theatre and uh, I love it. So I went looking for some history and found out that the theatre was built in the late 40s. First as an outdoor screen. There's the ticket box. And here's the screen with garden benches used as seats. Then Norman Hunter built the enclosed theatre in 1951 with his brother Mervyn. And it's been running ever since. Meet Roy Parnell, who was the first projectionist here. Oh, were you? This is Mike Rubo, and you're on candid camera. So that was in 1951, was it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, with the big drama at the opening, and I've heard about this plenty of times, and Roy will tell you too, that um, they didn't think they'd get it open, ready to open on time, so the whole community, which was absolutely wonderful, they came in and they put the seats up, the they did all sorts, <laughs> all came with screwdrivers and things, and it was a real community effort, it was absolutely wonderful. I took some of my finds to Norman Jr. and Beth, who are now the owners. You know that article? Is your dad there? That's mum, actually. Oh, it's your mum, yes. <laughs> Terrible photocopy. <laughs> you know, do you know that? Do you know that article? Uh, I, I'm, There's a I few in have, yes. do, you know, do you know what we found downstairs in the house? There's your dad. That's what I was thinking. Yes. Mike, we found the original sign of Oka Beach garden, garden pictures. Oh. It's sitting up in the... Oh, it's it's keep in, it? In yeah, it's sitting up there. Yeah. I'll show it to you on the way out. We've actually got a fair bit uh, of, of paraphernalia. We have the original projectors. Do you? Yeah. Oh, all of that was saved, huh? Uh, the original screen. Oh my I've god. I've got that up in the garage. Yeah. Oh no, no. That's my wonderful. We've got so. some, uh, the original, some movie tickets. The programs. tickets. Programs. Programs. Oh. So there's all sorts of documents. How much money was made on each yeah. show? There's even takings and <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> At this time, the theatre was leased to Linda and Russell Henson who were working the charm very effectively. There were lots of special events like French Fridays when we'd watch vaguely erotic French movies and pretend we could speak French. Bonsoir, mesdames. Bonsoir, messieurs. And then there were surfing spectaculars which packed in a completely different audience. The place was magic. <laughs> I remember at one function, a Tibetan fundraiser about that time, I collected some of the strange passion that the theatre aroused. We love a Voca theatre. This is what going to the movies is all about. Going to Hoyts, you might as well hire a video, I reckon. Well, I feel exactly the same, and I feel that the, the little theatre itself is absolutely unique. I love the furnishings, and I rather like the man at the piano. I think it's the best theatre on the Central Coast. It's old, it's older than all the other cinemas around. And it's got history. I mean, this eventually started up on the top of that hill there as a, a guy showing pictures on his garage wall. 
The 50th birthday party was a high point for everyone. I guess the hunters were dreaming what it would be like when they took back their treasure and ran it for themselves. I was hiding, Mike. I saw you with a camera and I thought, you're the one person I've got to avoid tonight. <laughs> this place is one of the most civilised places on the central coast. I go all the time. She only lives up the road. I'm, I'm up on the hill and uh -huh. I nearly live here. <laughs> I love it. Yes. I remember going to it when I was courting my wife. So that was in 1951, 52. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, oh, I would like to see it remain. I think it's got a heritage order on it. No, it's just come through with National Trust. National Today. Trust. Is that right? Well, that makes it more, it, it, yeah. uh, more we solid. We organised that protected. as a birthday present. Oh, Did you? Great. Yes. Oh. I'd gone to Norman and Beth some weeks before with the idea that they might apply for a National Trust listing. That sounds good. I, I agree. I think that, that something with that sort of status, which is why I very seriously considered the heritage listing, I thought that that could raise the profile of the, of the theatre, but there were too many catches associated right. with it. But this, this could be very good. Yeah, in fact, I, I brought along a form here. <laughs> that, that's not, Am I surprised? Sign here. Am I surprised? <laughs> no, there's, no, there's nothing for you to sign. There's nothing for you to sign. I bought it for your information. No, no pressure. <laughs> brought a camera too. Next five minutes, please. Get organised. We're all going into the cinema. Would uh, Norman mention the trust, I wondered? Or had I been too pushy? Thank you. What an exciting and special night we have here. A celebration of 50 years of continuous operation of this theatre, and I think that really is a special, a special feat. It's also an opportunity to reminisce a little bit about the history of the theatre. But the history isn't about a building, it's about people, and it's about our local community. Over the years, many people from the local area have worked here in all sorts of capacities. And the final cap on that stone, I guess, is that Avoca Beach community have shown their ownership of the theatre through an initiative to have it listed with the National Trust. And uh, we have Mr Mike Gruber in particular down here to thank for that. It was great to hear that Norman believed in community ownership of the theatre. And it made me want to help more. The chance came soon enough. The block beside the theatre, which gives it the garden setting and where the outdoor movies had been shown, came on the market. You always hear the word location, location, location. To the uh, auction sale here today of 71 Avoca Drive, Avoca Beach. There was no question that if this fell into the wrong hands, the theatre would surely be cut off from the sea by new units. We had to make sure that the hunters bought it. And with that idea in place, we packed the auction, all holding up signs which we hoped would scare off prospective buyers. The hunters were our co-conspirators in this, since they posted a sign on the theatre congratulating it for a heritage listing. In fact, there was no such listing because they hadn't wanted it. I see a million dollars to put me in the picture to start this auction. First call. That won me in 250,000. Here's a map of what was happening that day. There's the theatre. There's the block that was being auctioned with the old house on it. And here's what we hoped the hunters would do. Develop the side and back, leaving the lawn free for the alfresco. It's going to be yours, sir, if no one is coming in at $1,750,000. Third and final call. All done. All finished. Sold to you at the back, to you, sir. Well done. Anyway, the hunters got the land for a price which was apparently very good. At least the vendor thought so. 
accusing us of stopping him getting two million. <laughs> Were we naive in expecting a low-key development to come out of that day? Well, Norman must have realized that some sort of contract was forged with the community that day. That people had not come from as far flung as Kilcare, Wagstar, Davistown, Maccas, come all that way to endorse a big development. I think it's going to be very good. I'm excited. I'm excited. Any worries at all? No, no, no. God's walking along there somewhere, so I'm okay. Six months later, an article appeared in the Express Advocate which suggested that our trust had not been misplaced. Norman was quoted as saying that they'd bought the land to save it from overdevelopment. He added that they envisaged only one extra screen and an auditorium. I knew that they were worried about the vulnerability of single screens like theirs. I hoped it would help if I went up and down the coast and found other single screens that were making it were viable. I found the First Avenue Cinema at Sortel. I found the Regent near the Queensland border. The Montreal at Tumut. And the Little Huskisson. Certainly just a, a weekender of a movie theatre, but reinforcing our argument that charm is a very important part in catching and holding the older audience. I presented these findings to the hunters at our house, but they were not wanted. In June 2003, we got to see what they had in mind, and it was a shock. The modest plans had grown into a mass that enveloped the existing theatre. Three new screens, a restaurant, a gallery, and five units at the back. It seemed like the hunters were snubbing their noses at the neighbours. All the surrounding developments had stuck to the two-storey zoning. Why should they go to three and above, creating anger and, and setting precedents? And what did the National Trust, they were stakeholders now, think of these plans? The hunters came down and uh, brought their scheme with them and uh, an architect came and explained to us what they were proposing. They brought models and so on and we felt simply that uh, it swallowed the original building and the significance of that original building is its, its low-key nature uh, and sitting within, within that almost garden setting uh, on the coast and we felt that was just simply too big a development. Hmm. And what happened? You told them this? We did offer to um, uh, deal with them, uh, look at the plan and, and offer ways of modifying it, but basically the hunters did come back with a very uh, disappointed letter that we, we didn't support their plan. It was the National Trust's confirmation of our fears which started our opposition in earnest. Linda Hansen, the leaseholder, backed up what the Trust said and gave us a platform for protest. That was the theatre itself. She seemed to be proof that they were not correct when they claimed that this single screen was not viable. She had renewed her lease twice. Hardly something you'd do if you were losing money. Yes, we're doing quite well and we do love the cinema. Guided by Linda, we came round to an important compromise on the number of screens. Oh, I think another screen would be very beneficial here. Um, I think one more screen would actually take the pressure off. We picked up on two screens and made that part of our campaign. I sketched out a suggestion of how a second screen could be added without crowding out the existing theatre, how the lawn could be retained, and how units could be built around the back, no higher than the theatre. This idea got press coverage and uh, certainly annoyed the hunters, who said that we were comparing apples and oranges. Yet this went beyond amateur theory. It already existed at Lauriton up the coast. The 
plaza there is a historic theatre like ours, and it had recently added a smaller second screen. The problem is the big cities are ripping history out yeah. and replacing it with concrete jungles, and that's why people are now going out into the country, and they want to be rebirthed when they were kids, when they used to go to the, the way it used to be. Yeah. They don't like where we're going, they like where we've come from. And if you're able to capture where we've come from, where we're going, you've got a market. In the two years that followed, our voting sheet in the lobby went to 5,500 votes for our low-key option, as opposed to 180 for the Hunter plan. You know, it's incredibly sad, and I just wish there was something that could be done, and I just wish this... Um, oh, I think this... It stinks, sorry. But uh, it's a real crime, I reckon. It's just so sad. What an irony. Since then, the hunters have taken back the theatre, and for the last five years, they've run it brilliantly. They said a single stream couldn't work, but they've made it work better than ever before. And they've picked up four awards as Best Regional Cinema in New South Wales, proudly displayed on their website, of course. We imagined that they must have been so happy with the public affection for what they were doing, but no, they were just biding their time, and now they're coming back bigger than ever. This time it's five screens. Five screens on a dead-end road for a bunch of bemused retirees? What are they thinking? It's not incremental change that we're against, the fact that the foyer looks different and there's no longer free coffee, but massive change that'll wipe out historical identity. That's what we oppose. With that in mind, I went back to the National Trust, to Graham Quint, to see what they were thinking. So what do you think? Uh, we're amazed, Mike, that uh, a new DA's been put in for an even bigger development than the one we opposed last time. This is a National Trust building. Do you feel that they have some responsibility to listen to you? This development would totally overwhelm the existing heritage theatre. Uh, it would destroy it. Uh, there is no need for this new development because with new technology, digital technology, it's easier to mix and match films. Um, no other country cinema has done this. Uh, the maximum have been two additional cinemas for heritage cinemas in New South Wales. So you'll be opposing? Yes, very definitely. Next I went to see Bruce Lay, heritage architect. It's also rare in heritage terms and it's absurd that it's not protected. It's been recommended for protection and council has run away because if the landowner is not agreeable then they, they get shy. <laughs> That's the only reason why it hasn't happened and it should have happened. Yeah, so the, th the thing we have to do is push that again, isn't it? Absolutely. It needs heritage protection. It's really exciting to have experts like Graham and Bruce helping us save our little treasure. It's exciting too to have Steve Forty now leading our dynamic committee. Steve made his heartfelt appearance, I remember, in 2006. There are two things that really worry me. Um, losing this beautiful little theatre, I've had four generations of my family come here. To us it's a symbol of what Avoca stands for. It's a low-key atmosphere, it's the relaxed lifestyle, it's just, you know, this place cannot be replaced and it certainly can't be built over and enveloped by a huge monstrosity. The other thing that we really got to worry about is the overdevelopment. Steve will be pushing size and parking. That's an issue that even the non-patrons around here will relate to. This is the parking situation, a Sunday in September. The beach virtually empty. What will it be like when the nippers start nipping again? When the markets start marketing? When our summer hits us and you can't move an inch? And what will it be like if the hunter's temple of culture turns into a church on Sundays? An evangelical church, moreover? with massive growth potential and loads all that onto this. Good luck, little treasure. <laughs> <laughs>